The, the head teacher of uh, uh, Meganya Muslim Primary School, uh, the staff and uh, management of Meganya Muslim Primary School, uh, representatives from the uh, the Muslim League, Nendi branch. Um, I see some representatives from my ministry, uh, Ministry of Education, invited guests, parents, uh, and dear students. Assalamu alaikum and uh, a very good morning to you all. Um, to the children here, sab theek hai? Theek hai, okay. Because I know in primary school, you, we only know good morning and the things that have been taught. So it, it sort of brings back the memories of, uh, I think, our own schooling days. Eh? And uh, sometimes when we are small or when we are little, like the little children here, we sort of, we, we don't enjoy that stage in life. And when we look back, especially on days such as this. How, how, how I wish I could go back to being a child and be free of all the responsibilities that come when you become an adult, and especially when you become a minister for health. There's so many responsibilities. So uh, at the offset, uh, please allow me to thank you for inviting me to be here this morning to be part of your annual awards uh, ceremony. And indeed, today is a day of celebration because we are going to celebrate the, the excellence um, of our students, not only our students, but the hard work of our teachers and the, the contribution of our parents in making uh, any academic year a successful one. So thank you very much on that. Coming back to primary, uh, primary school, like I've just mentioned, um, it's very important that we set the right direction um, for our children, for the community, and for the nation by investing a lot in our primary education. And uh, I think this is, the, this is uh, the basic and the foremost right of any Fijian child, or any child, not only in Fiji, but across the globe. And of course, the, the future, as I've said, depends largely on the quality of education that we impart to our little minds. Nurturing our children at this crucial stage, with the right attitude, with the right mindset, mindset sorry, with positive thinking, uh, as I was looking at the the flag ceremony, that word came out to me, respecting all religions. These are some of the things that we can inculcate into our children from a very, very early age. And I'm proud to say, as the, as the Madam Head Teacher was going through the school report, a lot of activities came about which sort of shows very strongly the multiculturalism aspect of the hidden curriculum that is practiced in, in school. And I, and I must thank you for that. And of course, for me, many lessons, life, lifelong lessons, such as respect for your parents, respect for your elderly, hard work, the passion to succeed, can be, can be very easily uh, imparted to our little minds. <clears throat> and the onus lies on our teachers and our parents and the community. And of course, without the support of the school management, it cannot happen. So what is evident here this morning, I mean, as I drove through, this is the first time for me to come to this school, but as I drove through, the, the environment that the school has, the ambience that greets you, clearly reflects the commitment and the drive of all, all the stakeholders. And, and I must thank you all for that. And uh, sometimes the lessons that we impart to our children is, is sort of far reaching than what they score in the exams. And I said, that's also very important, because not all of them are going to be high achievers. We are going to have students who are of mediocre caliber. We are, we are going to have students who are, who are not that good. They would be failing and would require much more encouragement and attention than the high achievers. But all in all, what you do in, in, in primary schools, I think, goes a long, long way. And I must today acknowledge the fact that my teachers probably brought me to where I am today. From Malamala Public School, I know it's, it's, a, it's a school like this in, in the interior of Nendi. I still go and visit it and I still go and stand on the top of that building and see where my teacher's quarters was, where the head teacher's house was, where the canteen was. So those are the memories that we must have in any school environment, whether you're in a primary school or whether you're in secondary school. And when I look back to the hardships that we faced 
and that our children do not face. I, I'm proud to say that I'm part of a government that's, that prioritizes education. And it has sort of taken away a lot of burdens from the shoulders of the parents and guardians and made education and life much easier. So to the parents, please maximize on this opportunity. The government is investing a lot of money, okay? And, and it's, it's evident. We no longer have fundraising in schools. We used to be heavily burdened with fundraising. I mean, I remember going to a secondary school. I went to Xavier College, and I came from a very, very poor, poor family, single mother. And I would be sent home because I couldn't pay the fees. Okay, um, I think if, if we look around, some of us have gone through that. We were, we were sent out, we were made to stand outside. We were had to go and visit the principal's office so many times, explaining <coughs> when the fees would be paid, when the fees would be paid, and many a times. I mean, history is there. Um, that students like me were sent home. Unfortunately, our parents had to work harder, borrow from families, and then pay the fees so that we could sit for examinations. And not only school fees, there were a lot of other financial burdens that the parents had to go through. So the Fijian government, ladies and gentlemen, is trying its very best okay, to make sure that every child who is of the age to attend school does go to school. Unfortunately, we do have certain parents who are not too serious about educating their children. And this is where I'd like to encourage you. Please make every effort to send your child to school. But of course, with a little bit of responsibility that comes on your shoulders, you are still to assist your child with the homework. You are still to assist put food on the table for your child. You are still to provide for other basic necessities. And if I may say, there are many NGOs that come on board that assist in the provision of school bags, stationery, even shoes, and even food for those who cannot afford. But your responsibility as a parent must never be wavered. You must take responsibility of your child's education. I mean, my mother never knew that I would be probably taking up this high position one day. Very poor. But I think today she can say, well, she pushed us to go to school, even though we didn't have electricity. And, and you know how things come when you're very poor. So we had to do all our homework in school. And going to Xavier, you know, expectation is very high. So we would just use the sunlight. Because dark, when darkness came, we had only one kerosene lamp. And so that was used for eating, and that was used for other things. And then, of course, we had to ration kerosene too for the next day. So the light would be switched off, and you had to go to sleep. So when do you study? So we made maximum, me and my brothers and sisters, we made maximum use of our school days. In school, we would sacrifice our uh, lunch and uh, recess so that we could quickly do our homework. But that's not the case today. I'm sure lives have improved a lot. But I can still understand there may still be some families who are going through this poverty. I mean, there are poor people in Fiji as well, I admit that. And they're going through this. But you've got to understand, some of your costs we are taking away. We are taking away a lot of cost away. And the fact that we believe, the government believes, and I strongly believe, that education can set you free from poverty. It's very important. Whether you're in a primary school, whether you're in a secondary school, we have options for you to go to tertiary education with the Toppers uh, scholarship scheme, and we have the tertiary education loan scheme, where we want maximum people to benefit from them. So to the adults present here today, to the parents present here today, keep pushing and prioritize your children's education. And believe me, one day, your problems in terms of uh, going through this vicious cycle of poverty or other issues can be solved. And again, we, as, as a government, we are trying to push for a knowledge-based community. And we will need everybody's participation. To those children who can understand English, those who may not be able to understand what I say, to the little ones here, you, school rose out. school 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 I met up one, um, one little class one kid uh, in the hospital. I was in super private, admitted sort of one day. So he came to me with the nurse. And the nurse said, well, madam, you have a fan here. I said, oh, really? So it's a little kid, very talkative kid. And he came to me and said, you are very important to us. Hindi, na? Aap hamare liye. I said, OK. But he said, can you, can you take this message from me to, to PM and AG? I said, oh, OK. And I said, I said what is that, Beta? He said, can you tell them if we can have school for two days and holiday for five days? <laughs> okay? So, so, 
I was really sick, but it made me burst into laughter. So I said, Acha, better come here. Then I said, look, there's a reason why you have to come to school for five days and why you have to stay home for two days. But he says, I want to play. So the father was also there, so I, when, I, when I was discharged, I, mean, I had some drips, and so I went and I spoke. I said, which one is your father? So he said, okay, this is my father. So I said, it's your responsibility to tell your child the logic behind coming to school for five days. Because one day, if a child is absent from school, he sort of loses out on so much academic matter. Okay? Now, bringing to the next important point. As parents, you must make sure that the health of not only yourself, but your children and your family, family is also a priority. Feeding them before they come to school. I know sometimes we get lazy, eh? Chat. Okay, buy something from the school. I'll come back to the school canteen as well. So, acha, or just pack up something. It's very important that you give them the right type of food. The reason being, I mean, I think all of, all of you are aware that at the moment in Fiji or in the Pacific, we have a man-made disaster. Forget about T.C. Winston, that's a natural disaster that does, does a lot of damage. It's a man-made disaster that we have brought on ourselves by eating the wrong type of food. Either it's by overeating or not eating right or under eating or whatever. But that is something that is something that every home can address that. Every kitchen can address that. So mothers, I'm not saying that your place is in the kitchen, but I think most of us do the cooking for our family. To the fathers who go shopping, if you live in a rural setting, I see no reason why you have to go to the market. I see no reason why you have to go to the market. You can grow your own fresh vegetables in your backyard garden. Every home has a backyard garden. Okay? So I would like to encourage you to grow your own fruits and vegetables, which is fresh, and use that in your daily consumption. Um, I think I was reading somewhere this morning that the, even the price of vegetables is going up because the, the, the supply is less. So what is stopping us from doing that backyard gardening? Grow your own cabbages, grow your own tomatoes, have a few purple trees around. That will give you the much needed fresh fruits and vegetables that you need. Try to eat local. It's very important that you eat local. We go to the market, what do we see? We see oranges, apples, pear and grapes, and we push the guava, we push the mango, we say no to the poppers because it's local, but we go eat apples and I mean it's good it's good to eat that too. But let's be more local. Okay? It's cheap, okay? It's it's cheap and it's healthy and it has a lot of nutrition that we need. So that's something else. Coming back to school, how is the Ministry of Health or the government addressing uh, these uh, health issues? We have recently launched our national school health policy. Uh, some years ago there was a canteen policy that was launched and uh, we have found out that it has not been monitored, it has not been implemented. So coming from next year, it will be strictly monitored and implemented by the Ministry of Health uh, in partnership with the Ministry of Education to see that those schools that have canteens adhere to the rules in the policy. Otherwise, we'll keep talking about these things in the next 20 years and the problem of NCDs is going to increase and increase and increase. So members of the management board that is here, uh, I would like to seek your cooperation in this manner. That what are we looking at? Are we looking at profits or are we looking at health? At the moment, it's profit up here, health up there. Let's balance it, okay? So I, I seek your support in this to balance it because we are talking about the health of the future of Fiji and this is the future of Fiji. If I may also reveal to you some very alarming statistics, the youngest diabetes patient that we have in Fiji is of 12 years old. The youngest stroke victim is 12 years old. So you can understand why, as, as a new minister, I would say, I'm trying to emphasize on the need for us to be healthy. Our children are healthy, they will come to school regularly, and of course they'll be high achievers, okay, with all the support. But if our children constantly get sick and they stay away from school, it's going to put an extra burden to, to the parents as well, and of course uh, not lead to the desired result that the school wants to have. And, uh, other than that, the head teacher has also mentioned about the bus fare scheme, the tuition free grants, and I, I'm, I'm sure that's assisting you a, a lot in terms of uh, operating the school. And to the teachers, I, 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 I'm, I don't know where you are, you're sitting somewhere there, somewhere here. Thank you very much for making uh, Megania Muslim Primary what it is. Thank you very much for the achievements that you've uh, achieved over the past years, especially for this year. And I think this is this day is also to celebrate your success. Okay? 
be good role models, please be committed to your work, it's very important. This is a profession that I chose, and this is a profession that you chose. I spent 23 years as a secondary school teacher, and I, I do understand the challenges that go through, and we have to go over that. Okay? Because we have chosen this profession, challenges will come, some things will not go your way, some changes you might not like, but if we need to progress, changes are important, changes are inevitable, and we have to move with that. Um, uh, please do not resist change, but see change in a very positive manner and see how best you can take education forward. And uh, to the Board of Governors, again, thank you very much for the support that you give to the school in taking this school to greater heights in future. I've also said to the parents, please walk in hand with us, walk in hand with the government and take, uh, um, maximize the opportunities that the government of the day has for you, okay? Take things in a very positive manner. Festive seasons are coming, festive seasons are coming, Christmas is coming around, and then you have the long, uh, the, 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 the holiday break is about to come. Keep a good watch on your children, please. Monitor your children's movement. We don't want to lose any lives during this festive season, whether it's to road accidents, whether it's to drowning, or whether it's to any other social uh, ills that are plaguing our society. And um, again, I've also mentioned contribute to the health of your family, and that is also very important. To all the students who will be receiving their prizes today, uh, your, your first, second, third prizes, or your achievement prizes, congratulations, and I wish you uh, the very best in if you're leaving the school and moving to a secondary education, especially the class age students, I wish you well in whichever school you choose, whichever career you choose. I don't know whether you're going to meet for the next five, ten years, but I do look forward to some of you working for the government in the Ministry of Health. Okay? We are in short of nurses, so please choose a career. Okay? Your career path starts now when you uh, start going to secondary schools. Make wise choices and see how best you will contribute to being a good citizen of this beloved nation. So, and to those who will not be receiving prizes, uh, do not be disheartened. Uh, you always have time next year to do best. And again, we request parents, please um, um, guide and mold your children, because your role is also very important. Be good role models, as the MC said. Be very good role models, okay? Um, practice respect, practice um, Compassion, that's also very important. Look after the senior citizens that are in your home. That's advice to the parents, right? Eh? Be happy and be safe, be healthy, and God bless you all. Thank you once again.